Today we're going to look at the Gulf of Mexico. Specifically, we're going to talk about the US Gulf of Mexico. What's been happening in the sort of last six months, Q2, Q3 of 2023? The reason? Well, my newsfeed yesterday, and there's a, an extract from it, it was full of this new discovery. And looking at it, I thought, hmm, it's about time that we raided our Trove databases and made a video of the region. So we're going to have a look, a regional setting, we're going to look at news, and we're going to have a discussion on some of the issues. To start with, we'll look at a regional setting. Here's a map which uh, shows the entirety of the Gulf of Mexico. So on this map, we can see everything from uh, Yucatan Peninsula here in Mexico, across to Cuba, to Florida. But the region we're going to be talking about really is this zone here, the US Gulf of Mexico. Um, we do have information for the entire region, but the, today we'll just confine ourselves to what's been happening in the US sector. Love this map. It just shows you the uh, bathymetry contours and you can see a nice gentle slope. Uh, here's the obviously the Mississippi Delta coming out here. And then you see this region here and, and all of this uh, disturbance of the seabed is due to the geology. A lot of it is due to the Sigsby escarpment, the Sigsby salt. So um, lots of uh, salt movement, pillowing, diaperism and uh, yeah, that's changed it very, very different on this side of the Gulf than as you get over towards the uh, the Florida side. Really great map here as well to give a, a quick overview and introduction to the basin. And again, you're seeing the sort of the salt tectonics here, the uh, the break in where the, the, the blocks uh, change shape and, and this jagged line. This is the uh, this is the thousand meter, I beg your pardon, thousand foot water depth or isobath. And here on the shelf, you can see these uh, these yellow patches. These are all the um, the oil fields and gas fields on the shelf. And then down in the uh, in, in on the basin floor, in the abyss, as it were, on the uh, the break of slope, and and down onto the uh, the floor of the Gulf of Mexico, we can see all these new oil and gas fields, predominantly oil fields, out here. And uh, we're going to be looking at those in some more detail. Now there's lots of information on this particular uh, cross section. Here it is, it's running from Alabama down through Louisiana, sort of out through Mississippi Delta, out across the shelf, down the slope, and then right across the abyssal plain here, which is mainly oceanic crust. At the, uh, at the far end, and let's deal with that, you can see uh, Cuba here, the Cuba platform. Now there's lots of inversion. This is a plate tectonic boundary with uh, with lots of uh, thrusting going on, particularly on the north end of uh, of Cuba. And then you know we're also this line's also catching the the Yucatan Strait, or you know the the expression offshore expression of the Yucatan Peninsula. Now we want to jump back right across here to to the onshore region, and you can see here that we start off with this Jurassic salt just at the base of the, uh, the sequence here, overlaid by undifferentiated Mesozoic, then up into Jurassic, through into uh, the Cretaceous sands. And then by the time we get uh, here into this dark blue, we're in the, uh, the upper Cretaceous. Above that, this is what's known as the Wilcox. It's the Eocene uh, interval, Paleocene to Eocene interval. And then we get into the Oligocene, Eocene, this, uh, this yellow horizon, before we get into the into the, the basin proper, where we get this massive great thickness of upper Miocene to Pleistocene to Holocene and Pleistocene. So this huge thickness here, and it's the sort of shelf and the slope area, it's getting down to 12 to 15 kilometers. This is giving us the horizontal scale, whereas these tick marks refer to the, uh, the vertical scale. So we're looking at sort of 12 to 15 kilometers of sediment in this region here. So no problem getting uh, any source rocks mature. There's sufficient depth to do it. Now, the other feature that really pick out here is this alloxanous salt. Now, this is the salt that uh, has, has been moved around. It's moved into pillars, which uh, is actually moved up under the weights and pressures of the overburden. So this is the salt that gives us all these features that are the structures that uh, we end up drilling. A lot of the oil fields are found. And you can see, I think the green dots here represent oil fields. They're generally in this um, Miocene to recent section, but you can see on the shelf, there are one or two older accumulations. Fantastic geology, complex 
complicated really by this salt that has moved it and we'll see more of that in the next few slides. Now source rocks, I kind of like this one. Really you have to work out, so if I point out this is Florida, Alabama, here's the border with Mississippi coming across, here's, uh, here's Texas and we go all the way down here to the border with Mexico down here. So generally speaking we have this arc of, of Jurassic source rocks, okay, um, some of the ages are slightly different but generally you've got Jurassic source rocks. Then you seem to have an arc here of Cretaceous source rocks, again maybe uh, different ages but uh, they tend to be in this region and then in this thickness where the uh, the delta is um, or the paleo deltas the the major build outs here of sediment this is the area of paleogene lower tertiary uh, source rocks in this region so lots of different things going on i love this uh, great graphic and just point out some of the features so here's uh, sea level here and these are these are the platforms you can see here now if we look at this platform here it's actually the atlantis platform and it's drilling its wells they're coming down vertically here well coming down through the water column in fact and uh, this is the shelf up here you can see there's there's rivers incising a channel right through here then cutting down this is the uh, the shelf break and you can see very steep slopes on this as we go from say a thousand foot of water down to four to eight thousand feet of water here you can just about make out the wells the um, on the seabed here the wellheads and the manifolds and the pipelines that uh, that all make the way back up to the uh, to the producing vessel this is a this is a um, a rig that presumably is is drilling on this drill center here um, and then as you go down through the sediments here, you go down through the Pleistocene and Pliocene sediments uh, through the, the Sigsby salt nap. Now, here, this is a great illustration showing how this salt that was laid reasonably flat, um, thick, flat salt when it was deposited, but now it's really starting to, to, um, to, to move up and inject into the overlying sequence. And here you can see it's trying to form a diaper in this region here. And here there's a salt wing coming up, really pushing its way through. But carrying on the story, we go through the salt and then you can see all these wells here deviated out to get into this. This is the reservoir here in the, uh, the M78 sequence by the looks of things at the Atlantis field. Now, somebody said to me, well, how do they manage to build angle in this cavern? Well, yeah, okay, good, good question. Uh, it's not a cavern. It's actually uh, a bit of artistic license. This is all solid rock, obviously, but the artist has tried to show us this, what would be happening if we could somehow see through the rock. So don't think of this as a cave. This is solid rock from, from one side to the other, um, but we're just being, the artist is giving us an impression of what would be going on. And then here is the accumulation. So above this, there's probably, these are all shales um, that are the seal. And then this is a sandstone, which is the, uh, the reservoir for the, uh, for the oil and perhaps gas that's in there. And then as we go down through here, you can see here's all the layering and we go deeper into the section, coming on down here into some of the Eocene marls and shales and sands. The structures here, not as complicated as they are in and around the salt. Some nice anticlinal features, some of them elongate, uh, lots of faulting on here you can see. Great, uh, great picture. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can kind of study this and find things that are that I've missed talking about here. But it's a, it's a great artist's impression of what's going on underneath the seabed. Now on the seabed, slightly different story, here's our uh, producing facility and it's a semi-submersible and this is what these uh, semi-submersible rigs look like underneath the water. So these, uh, these pontoons here, this is what gives them the buoyancy, this is why they float and uh, these are the legs going up and we normally just see the bit above the sea level well th these are either anchors or may maybe actually the flow lines in this case i'm not entirely sure but they do seem to link up with some of this uh, s some of this pipe work on the seabed here and and basically at some distance normally uh, of the order of a, a kilometer or two away you would get a cluster of wells on the seabed so each one of these is an individual well and it's got the this is the wellhead that's uh, that's on here and very often 
these will actually go back into a sort of a manifold. So this will be a sort of a gathering station, if you will. Lots and lots of controls to control the individual wells, to, to, to shut them in, to close valves, to open valves as and when required. And then you have these, these flow lines going all the way up to, uh, to the platform where the oil and gas will get separated from any produced water from the, uh, the reservoirs. And then the oil and or gas will then come down here and this will be the export line and is actually it goes all the way across the uh, abyssal plain and then up the uh, the continental slope here and it's will be going from somewhere between 4,000, 8,000, 10,000 foot uh, water depth up to around about a thousand feet and you can see here it's actually going to a shallower platform perhaps uh, to, to be mingled in with uh, s some other uh, oil and then pumped again tens of uh, kilometers uh, to the shore. So another drill center here another cluster of, uh, of, of wells uh, which seem to actually uh, on this on this artist's impression go in here now obviously all of this is underwater you'd never get such clear waters that you could see all this but uh, if you kind of took all the water away this is what you would see now reservoir age again uh, Pause the video and study this. Uh, what we can say is the Pleistocene and Pliocene, these are the youngest uh, reservoirs. They tend to be just here closest to the slope break. Whereas if we look at the, uh, the Miocene and older, well, we can see lots of Miocene, lower and middle Miocene reservoirs in and around the offshore Louisiana area. But then as we go on to the west here, to the offshore Texas area, well, these are federal waters now, way beyond state waters. But, um, you know, then we can see this is the load. So this would be the sort of the Eocenes and th this would be your Wilcox type play. So this is the lower tertiary deep water potential that uh, they're showing in this polygon here. This is from Trove and just shows some of the lease areas that we have for all the fields and discoveries and in some cases prospects and projects. We have entries for about 127 just within the Mississippi Canyon, 104 in Green Canyon, Garden Bank, so on and so forth, right down the list here. You can see all the way down. And, and this isn't the most recent one. Um, we've actually got more than this. We've got 195 fields, 80 discoveries, subsea developments, you know, we've got abandoned developments, we've got spars, TLPs, some undrills, semi-submersible, fixed platforms, all sorts of different types of development, different reservoir ages. We're not showing all the ages down there. There's quite a number of them. Whether they're deep water, or ultra deep water, or even shallow, we study all the deep water blocks uh, and have all the fields and discoveries intro for that. We can show this in a demonstration, just how comprehensive the database is. But just to give you some idea, if you open the tab on stratigraphy, you can see all sorts of stratigraphic columns, uh, descriptions of everything. And this is only a part of, of, of what you can see within, uh, within Trove. Likewise, when it comes to the source rocks, here's all the publications we can find on geochemistry. So now we're going to go on and we're going to uh, look at the news in the region. What's been happening in the last six months or so? Well, one of the items that caught our eye was the the big seismic survey that's been shot here over on the western side of the Green Canyon region. And this is uh, this is known as the Engagement 4, and it's uh, an ocean bottom node, multi-client acquisition. So OBN uh, seismic. It's been shot by uh, SLB and TGS uh, as, as a, uh, a joint venture here, shooting over 152 OCS blocks. It was shot in the second quarter and I think into the third quarter of this year. They're using some of the state-of-the-art geophysics um, to actually be able to image what has been historically a very difficult area to image. So the expectation is with the with the OBN that uh, they should be able to to get very very uh, high quality data out of this region. The uh, the fast track product should be available Q4 2023. Final data in the second half of 2024. Now the project uh, has been supported by industry funding. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, lease sales as, as we uh, as we go forward. So uh, we just uh, an acquisition that uh, was in the press. 
probably many, but uh, we don't know if this is of interest to people. Um, this is the uh, W&T offshore, and they acquired a, a, a bunch of assets here. Eight shallow water Gulf of Mexico uh, producing assets. They paid $32 million. Water depths 25 to 265 foot. That's the acreage, around about 72% equity. Uh, they operate about uh, two thirds of it. Um, and uh, they've added around about 2,400 barrels of oil equivalent per day and around about uh, a reserves out of 3.2 million barrels. The chairman, president and CEO, that's one very, very busy person there taking, doing all those roles. But no map in the press release that we saw. This is kind of in line with W&T Offshore's modus operandi. Uh, you know, you can see that going back in time from 2010 up to 2022 and, and now indeed 2023, and you can see they've made a series of acquisitions and built up a portfolio. This is a company that tries and works uh, works those assets and makes a return. So just uh, an interesting little story that we saw that we thought we'd uh, put in here. Maybe you want to see more of those. Let us know in the comments below. So let's have a look at some of the uh, some of the major developments uh, and look at the discoveries. Uh, this is Shell's Dover discovery, and here it is on the map here. And you can see where is it? it's just south of Appomattox. This is uh, Shell's latest. Well, it was a discovery in 2018, and uh, they're actually they've now gone to an investment decision, and so they're going to move ahead and develop this. It's in Mississippi. Mississippi Canyon 612, about 175 miles southeast of New Orleans and in water depths of 7,500 feet. It's expected when this uh, this discovery comes on production, it's in the Norfolk Formation and uh, it'll come on at around about 21,000 barrels of oil per day. There's the tieback and anticipated that it's going to be one of the low end of the greenhouse gas emissions. Shell, 79%, and Chinese National Oil Corporation, 21%. Moving on to Vito, and this is Shell again with partners Equinor. And this is their 13th deep water facility. This is Vito, and you can see it's a semi submersible It looks like a huge platform here. It was discovered in 2009. It's only just come on stream in 2023. It's in Mississippi Canyon and uh, about 150 kilometers southeast of New Orleans. Water depths, 4,000 foot, eight subsea wells. It's expected that uh, at peak production, there's certainly the capacity to produce 100,000 barrels of oil per day, and reserves, 290 million. It's going to be exported in the Midstream Mars pipeline export system. So this is going to be a big addition. Perhaps the biggest is uh, Mad Dog Phase 2. Now, this is Mad Dog here. It's a spa, and it's been in operation for, for some years now. But the latest edition, which has just come on here earlier this year, is the Argus platform. Now, it's just started this year. The field itself, discovered in uh, 1998, it was BP, but there's the partners in this venture. First door was 2005. It's located Mississippi Canyon, and it's uh, offshore from New Orleans. There's the water depth, another amazing 7,500 foot of water. It's anticipated that it could add up to 140,000 barrels of oil per day. This is a massive installation, massive facility. And it's possible that uh, oil could go via the pipeline to Caesar and uh, gas to uh, Cleopatra. There's over 5 billion barrels of oil in place. That's not reserves, that's the oil that's in the ground, that's the resource size. It's anticipated with these two platforms all working away, it should recover quite a, a sizable chunk of, of that resource. Now, why is there a second facility? Well, due to the fact that appraisal results just got better and better and the field grew in size. Now, I look at this and think there's a study to be done in future to work out if you'd done that appraisal up front, would you have got away with just one huge platform or semi-sub and spa or, or, or would, it, would you have developed it differently? Uh, it's a, That's a question to ask. But for now, great news. It's going to be added. That's Mad Dog Phase 2. Another recent discovery, Sunspear, it's by Talus Energy. It was July 2023, it was discovered. I'll leave you to read this, but you know, it stands out as being quite a, a marked amplitude anomaly here. A bright that we can see cutting off at depth. Uh, obviously, it's uh, it's abutting this fault here. Uh, here's the sands, and uh, they look to be uh, good quality sands at that. There's the partnership. Expect oil, first oil in the order of 18 months to two years, 
and likely that that'll uh, actually be a tie back to the uh, Prince platform. Going on, Pickerel, another 2023 discovery, and this was by uh, Hess, 100%. Now, they found 90-foot net oil pay in high-quality sands in Mississippi Canyon Block 727. Miocene Age Reservoirs, this is the uh, the drill ship that uh, made the discovery in Deepwater Asgard. And this is the, uh, the Tubular Bell Spa Facility, likely that Pickerel may well be tied back to the spa. Uh, first oil, 2024, that's what they're saying. Shenzi North achieved first oil. It's Woodside Energy, again, achieved this year. It's a two-well tie back to the, to the main Shenzi field. And here's the, uh, here's the facility, again, another, another huge-looking facility. And this is over in Green Canyon. It's Woodside in partnership with uh, Repsol. Don't have too many details on this one at this time, but if uh, somebody wants to send them in, we'll, we'll put out an update. Tiberius. Well, here's uh, the Lucius Spa here and the Lucius Field. And just down to the south, southeast of uh, Lucius, here's the Tiberius Prospect, as was. Now, we're over in Keithley Canyon. It's uh, block 964. And potentially, uh, this discovery could be tied back to uh, the oxy-operated Lucius. Now, the discovery was made by Cosmos Energy, and it was drilled on a, a four-way structural closure, and the reservoir is the Wilcox, so that's uh, Eocene age. 250 foot of net oil pay. Again, water depth, 7,500 feet. These are really, really deep, deep water wells. And uh, TD, very deep too, 25,800 feet. This was another update that we saw, and this is the one that uh, also uh, spared us to, uh, to to actually make this video. And uh, this is some information that uh, the Wellagents posted on LinkedIn. Lease round news. Well, we can uh, look at the outcome of lease sale um, 259. Now, this was held on the 29th of March in 2023. You can see on here, these are all the blocks with, with one, two, or three, or four bids that we're showing here. And this is... Uh, Overland, this is a map by TGS showing their, um, their 3D and indeed their 2D seismic coverage over the region. Now, $264 million was uh, the high bids. 313 tracks were awarded. There were 13,600 on offer. So there is still a, a lot of acreage to be uh, picked over and looked at uh, in and around the, the Gulf of Mexico. And this new seismic over you know, areas like this Western Green Canyon, certainly going to open those uh, areas up in the future. 1.6 million acres of 73 million that were on, on offer. TGS seismic covers most tracks in the east, but not so much here in the, uh, in, in the western area. But the big winners in the round, well, Chevron, Exxon, BP and Shell, I think one, two, three and four. And uh, some confusion. I mean, the next lease sale, it seems to be 261. I haven't been able to work out what's happening with uh, 260. But uh, due now to be on the 8th of November, it was going to be in September, but uh, there's been a lot of to and fraying, and this is being in, in the courts. And uh, the Biden administration wanted to reduce the area, and then there was a legal challenge, and now it's going to all been resolved, and uh, it's going to be a lease sale on the 8th of November. Now, it may be the last lease sale until 2025. Why? Well, because the Biden uh, five-year plan basically says there will only be three lease sales in the Gulf of Mexico, so I anticipate they're going to be two years apart. So, yes, things will kind of slow down. So this is the... This is perhaps one of the last opportunities to uh, acquire some acreage for, uh, for exploration for the, for the next few years. I've well, just uh, picked out three examples uh, from Trove. So this is what you'd get if you wanted to find out about Mad Dog with Trove. You'd be able to click a button and this is all the information you'd be able to look at. Likewise, for Dover, even though it is just a discovery that's gone to uh, at the FID stage, it too was, uh, has got lots of information and, and we'll update this as and when that FID decision is made, when we get more details on the development plan. We keep all this stuff evergreen. And then here's Vito here, so lots of information to be gleaned. And this is the same for every one of the entries in the Gulf of Mexico. Carbon storage, well, this was in the news here. And this is the CGG Geoverse study that they did on carbon storage. Now, this area is the one that's been completed. It's uh, it's basically the phase one area here. 
and then they're going to go on and uh, complete the phase two study and this is in uh, Q1 2024. Now it's going to cover sort of subsurface and risk and, and, and sort of the opportunity. Where are the emitters? Where are the sources of the uh, CO2? Will they be using uh, decommissioning fields? Are the concerns about leaky wells? Is it looking at saline aquifers? Well, a good place to start identify the best areas for uh, for carbon capture. Now, Trove CCS, we do something slightly different. We have every project globally and lots and lots of analogs in there. And for anybody considering CCS, you get hold of, uh, of Trove because quite a number of these projects haven't worked anything like they were expected to. And just to understand what's gone wrong and what's gone right as well. So every project worldwide is in the uh, Trove CCS. Now we're just going to have a look had a few items, sort of a random mix of, uh, of information. So water depths, we've mentioned it a number of times. And you can see here we've got water depths drilled in the sort of the, the 1990s and early 2000s. And, and we were getting down to the order of a thousand foot. And this is on the shelf. But through time, these are the discoveries, the fields of today. And in the time we were going down and getting down to 7,000 feet of water. So this is from a, a DGE and they're talking about the subsea developments of which they've got 18 at the time of this slide was made of uh, 62 subsea completions, 27 operated and then 90 wells drilled, 41 operated in the deep water. They, like others, have got lots of experience in the um, deep water Gulf of Mexico. So what are the challenges for deep water drilling? Well, water depths of 4,000 to 8,000 feet and deep wells, sometimes down to 35, 40,000 feet. Well, you encounter some very, very high pressures at those depths of the order of 20,000 pounds per square inch. These are absolutely amazingly high pressures. Reservoir intervals, they can be about 1,000 foot thick and the, the reservoirs can stretch over a very wide area you know, a, a, an OCS block is not three miles by three miles. So if uh, you imagine that's uh, nine of those, that is quite a, a wide area. Reservoirs tend to have quite low permeability. And so they require quite advanced completions. And, you know, often they need to be stimulated. So here, uh, here is the, the rig basically drilling through this enormous water column here, going into this sediments going through a fault here nicely missing this lens that was quite uh, quite well done but then having to go right through this canopy of sigsby salt so this is the salt here now it's kind of it looks like it's pillowed but uh, it hasn't uh, it isn't a diapiric salt here then into these upper tertiary sediments then down is the lower lower tertiary so this might be a wilcox type play here's your cretaceous possibly source rocks down here possibly source rocks in this uh, sequence here almost certainly at these sorts of depths they'd be pretty much uh, very late mature to over mature and then uh, here we've got the the autochthonous salt so this is the salt that hasn't moved this is the salt that's uh, that's moved up through the sequence and been injected into younger sediments now drill ships they have to uh, endure fantastic storms and hurricanes a lot of the year you know the the weather is 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 quite good um you know in the north sea we have a sort of a stormy season for for quite a lot of the year they get what's called loop and eddy currents which uh, cause uh, vibrations and motions in the drill string given the enormous water column there's unpredictable high pressure gas charge stringers and faults that sometimes come quite close to the surface going through these salts uh, they can be very unpredictable there can be layers within them um, that, that uh, trap sediments and these can sometimes uh, because they're isolated they can be at abnormal pressures and, and cause all sorts of problems there's uh, an unpredictable base to the salt as best as the geophysicist tries to pick it and tries to convert that to depth there is often un un uncertainty certainly in exploration wells and uh, there can be very very rapid pressure differentials the pressures could drop or equally they could rise very very quickly you get these thief zones which are abnormally low pressure zones which cause the mud in the well which is is in there to hold back uh, some of these high pressure formations so there are also thief zones which are uh, abnormally low pressure zones which because the mud has been formulated with a high density to keep back 
these high pressure formations, if you come into a low pressure, then all of a sudden you're going to get losses of the mud into the formation and you get lost circulation and fluid loss. To try and make sure that the well is under control, you've got to, uh, you've got to deal with that very, very quickly and uh, get the hole back in good shape. Ultra deep reservoirs, yes, I mean, we've got great imaging techniques now with some of the modern seismic that we have, but it's still lots and lots of challenges. There's high temperatures down there, there's high pressures, tar, well, at these depths, and low natural flowability. I like that word. Well, we talked about weather challenges. Uh, that's Thunder Horse on the, uh, on the left there. Not entirely sure which rig this one is, but you can see it's all been pretty mangled by a, a passing hurricane and lots of damage done. So this was a, a forecast put out in June 2022, and it was uh, the expectation for the fields that would come on in the Gulf of Mexico last year. But we talked about Vito and Argos, so they've slipped into this year. But uh, hey-ho, um, you know, you can see there's, there's a number of developments going on. And we've tried to kind of carry that forward today in our video to show what's been done in 2023 so far. And we'll have another video to basically close out the year and, and show what's been achieved. Now, if we look at it all in terms of the production profile, well, you know, we say sort of steady eddy on the oil, but uh, gas is declining. And you can see here that uh, in around about 2019, just shy of 2 million barrels of oil per day. And perhaps with this new production that's anticipated and modeled in here, you know, we're seeing that it's, it's the oil rate is coming down a little bit. Now, gas in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, natural gas or sales gas, um, basically that's gone from around about 3 billion cubic feet a day and it's fallen down to of the order of two billion so real decline for this now much of the gas in the uh, in, in the offshore gulf of mexico is is associated gas there aren't that many uh, dry gas fields or dry gas accumulations that are produced so uh, a lot of this is gas it's uh, come from separating the oil but is in uh, in major decline and perhaps that's because uh, lower gor fields are being found i'm not entirely sure but uh, somebody could put a, a comment below and explain why there's such a, a disparity between oil and gas, if you'd be so kind. Thank you. Trove, we've talked about it. We have 369 fields, 134 discoveries. We've got also some prospects, some dry holes, some projects that are ongoing at the minute, and some of those will have now moved into being producing fields. This is Apotomax. Um, you know, you can see here that we've got all this sort of information. We've got uh, geology, we've got description of the facility, of the project, of the timeline, of the operator, uh, again, showing a geoseismic section here, all sorts of information. And this is what we've got on just one field. Now, you know, if you work on the, if you work on the field, you know lots, lots more. But uh, if you, if there's a hundred or 200 fields you don't know anything about, then you can find that information here in Trove. Here's just a few of the fields that are covered. I mean, we just uh, just chose these at random. Um, you'll recognize many of the, the names on there. And finally, well, you know, some vendors charge $3,300 for a single field report. Uh, we see a lot of those uh, being advertised. Now, we have got a special offer today, and it's going to go on until the end of 2023. And that is that uh, you can buy the entirety of Trove uh, Gulf of Mexico for the U.S. Uh, with over all the fields and discoveries and prospects. Uh, and that's the price that we're charging. It's from that. Um, larger companies, well, we'll ask them to pay a little bit more because there's an awful lot of work has gone into uh, to generate these databases and maintain them and keep them up to date. At, at current rates, we're charging, I think, something like $28 per field report. Slightly different, but, uh, but we're not going to be doing that for much longer. So if you do want to uh, find out, then get in touch. There's our email address down there. So in summary, Gulf of Mexico overall, it's seeing a slight decline in oil production. Gas production is declining at a, a, a much uh, higher rate. The discoveries and new fields continue coming online, you saw in 2022 and now in 2023. Lots of discoveries are, are coming forward and new fields are uh, coming on production. Future lease sales, well, it looks like they're going to be fewer in frequency and um, the gaps in between. Ultra deep water wells, remember, they're very, very high pressure. 
Um, we need a lot of new technology, and these deep water rigs and drill ships are absolutely technological wonders. But they cost a lot of money to drill. We've noted here the uh, the tree on FID. Woodside are due to uh, make a decision in, on developing the field this year. And now that's in the Mexican waters. But uh, yeah, no trove, no comment. Every field in Discovery, and we include all of offshore Mexico, that's also available. So uh, don't just understand half the basin. Have a look at the rest of the basin. Have a look at what there is in Mexico in, in trove. So uh, have you got any videos for the Trove News Channel? Just have a chat with us, send a PowerPoint presentation, tell us the story, and if we think our viewers would like it, we'll publish it. It has to be relevant and it has to be sort of high level technical. We don't want too much detail. We've, we've basically banned all of these words. You can't use those. They're a little bit too detailed. So we like to kind of keep it high level and just give an overview of what's, uh, what's happening. It's not just specialists that can understand the language. Thanks very much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps us. And ring that bell. There's the, uh, there's the email addresses again. Please get in touch. Bye for now. Apatomics. Have I said that right? Apatomax. Apomatix. Apomatix. That's going to be one for the uh, Cooper bloopers, I suspect. Appomattox, Appomattox. I know it was a battle in the American Civil War, but uh, not the easiest name to say.